Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Pejuto, and today we're going to make a bandsaw box. Before we get into the making of this bandsaw box, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. My website and my podcast website and my go-kart racing league, all Squarespace sites. I've been using Squarespace long before they were even a sponsor, and I used to be a web developer, so I know the pains of making a website. Squarespace takes care of all of that. You don't have to worry about the code, the back end, servers, domain name. You don't have to worry about any of that. Squarespace will take care of that for you. They've got beautiful templates to get you started. Lots of cool features. If you want to have a members area on your website where you can create your own community and share information with your members, you can do that. You can have a members, a password protected members only section of your website. Squarespace seriously makes all of that super easy. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So I have my pieces cut up for the bandsaw box. I've got a piece of zebra wood for the front and back and then just Baltic birch plywood for the middle. I really like the Baltic birch plywood because it has these beautiful lines in there if you get the good stuff. The thickness of this doesn't really matter. It's just going to determine the depth of your drawers. But one of my limitations is on my little bandsaw I can only cut so thick. So this falls within my bandsaw limitations. So I know we'll be able to cut this out over here. So this is roughly three and a quarter inch thick. So now we're just gonna add some glue and glue them together. These cheap F style clamps from Harbor Freight work great for that. So now we can let that sit and dry for a couple hours. So we have our blank all glued up. I drew this in Illustrator. I've made lots of bandsaw boxes and this time I wanna do something a little bit different. Typically, I have the whole thing out of one block, but these drawers right here, I think I'm going to use a different contrasting wood and then we can get some tighter tolerances with the, with the boxes and, and whatnot. This isn't meant to look like Bender from Futurama. I don't even watch Futurama, I just, Hopefully when I'm done, it doesn't look like Futurama. We're doing a little bit of shop upgrades and where my bandsaw normally is, isn't going to work. So I'm actually gonna bring my little bandsaw over to the workbench. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of spray adhesive to attach this. Line up that bottom line with the bottom of the blank. Now we can take this over to the bandsaw and we're just going to cut the outside line going right through where the drawers are. I want to go right outside the line, get as close to what I can without touching it. That way I can sand down to the line in a later step. This is a 3 16 4 TPI skip tooth blade. This is the blade that I've had the most success with working on the bandsaw. I only use two blades and this is the blade that I use 98% of the time. The other one is a resaw blade on the bigger bandsaw. I get asked all the time where I get the blades. As always, links to everything is down in the description. It, this, is, this is the blade. This is the one that you want. So, now it is time to cut the back off of this box. Typically in the past, I've used a fence on there and rode this up against the fence. Today, I'm just gonna cut to a line. Sometimes I find cutting to a line is just easier. So I'm just going to draw a line on here and then cut that out. Dan just pointed out that my table is not set to 90 degrees. That's something you might want to check before doing this. I've already started. I'm just going to commit and, and I know that my back is going to be like that. Big deal.
So this is just a bench top. Uh, it's a Rikon 10305 or whatever. And as far as bench top bandsaws, this thing has been excellent. This is not sponsored. I've even removed their logo to let you know this is not sponsored. Um, but this, uh, I'm, this is about the max that you can cut on here. And this blade works really well at cutting large boards. I don't always like recommending tools because I hate to steer somebody in the wrong direction, but this bandsaw is relatively cheap compared to a lot of bandsaws, cheap as in price, but I get a lot of value out of it. And it's nice and small. I can get a good cut on there with the right blade. So uh, let's, <laughs> let's square up my table. So this is my bandsaw box book. Typically, when you go to cut the drawers out, you enter from the side and then you have this curve cut that you have to hide later. This time, we don't have to hide any curve cut. We can just come in right from the side and I will cut out all of those, just like so. Same blade, not changing blades at all today. So there's one. When you get to this, this tight radius right here, it's, it's sort of like driving a stick shift. There's this equilibrium of push and turn. You can't just turn it without pushing, otherwise you're gonna twist that blade. So you'll get a feel for it if you're new to the bandsaw. It, it takes a little bit of practice, uh, especially on bigger chunks of wood like this. If you're just cutting something really thin, you can actually force it through the blade and cut whatever you want. But when you get into something that's four inches thick, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a feel. You get a feel for how much you have to push and how much you have to turn. So, two more to go. Another tip on the bandsaw is don't push too hard. Let the blade do the work. You're, this is really thick, so there's a lot of waste that has to be removed. That's why we have the four TPI blade in there, because it has the big gullets, and it allows that waste to be moved. If you push it too hard, the blade is going to drift, and you're not going to get a clean cut. You're also going to get burning, because it can't remove that waste enough. So just take your time, let the blade do your work, and yeah. That looks a lot less like Bender now. Now it is time to glue that back, back on there. And even though our table wasn't set to 90 degrees, it will all work out just fine. So, I'll just throw a little bit of glue on here. Actually, you know what we should do? lightly sanded the inside, not much, just wanted to remove some of the rough teeth marks, but I didn't want to change the shape or expand the hole anymore. So just light sanding. Now we're gonna glue that back back on. Try to line up that kerf as perfect as possible so we can hide that cut line. You can never have enough woodworkers telling you you can never have enough clamps. So for the drawers, I want to use a dark piece of walnut. So I have this that is rough on both sides. So we need to mill this flat. So I'm just going to cut a strip off over. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just gluing up the blank for the drawers. Got some walnut, and again, with the plywood, this might be a little bit too thick, but I can plane that down if I need to. I do want the drawers to stick out a little bit more to give it some, some depth and a little bit more of a design-ish kind of feel. 
So once again, I'm just using these cheap Harbor Freight clamps. These are like $3.99, $2.99. And you can never have enough of them. You can never have enough woodworkers telling you you can never have enough clamps. So while this is drying, we can take the clamps off of this and start sanding. So this is why we left the paper on until now, because we can sand down to that line to get that perfect shape. So I had a glue up failure right there. This, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I need to get glue in there and then clamp that back down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up some glue to thin it down. And get some glue in there. I'll have a link to this. This is a syringe kit that you can get on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks. It comes with all different sizes and then a bunch of different needles. I didn't know if the glue would come out of that tiny little needle and it does, it definitely does. So I cut out the ovals for the drawers. And once again, I'm using some spray adhesive to attach it to the wood. And then we'll cut this out on the back. So we got the three drawers cut. We got the walnut on the both sides. Now this is probably not gonna fit in there just yet because we need to sand down to the line. And this is currently, I want it to stick out a little bit. Right now it's probably sticking out too much. So I need to cut off a little bit. But before I do that, I wanna experiment with something. I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm gonna do a bunch of little divots in there just to give it some texture. And if I like it, I'll keep it, chop off a little bit off the back. If I don't like it, I have some room to just chop it off and get rid of this. It goes a lot quicker than what you might think. But I like that. That looks cool. It's random. So I think the next steps is to, well, I, I got to the next step for me is to figure out how much I want it to stick out. So I do think I need to cut off about a quarter of an inch back there. So I drew my line on there so I can thin this down. That means also I'm cutting my template off. So I'm going to have to reattach a template so I can sand down to the line in a later step. When you have something that's kind of wobbles like this into the blade, the blade's gonna to wanna to take it and throw it up. So I'm just going to grip it very firmly. And then once it enters in there, then I should be good to go. It's that first initial grab. It's gonna to wanna to throw my hand right towards the blade. So we got the templates reattached. This will now be the, the back. But these are all three the exact same size and there is no top or bottom right now. So what we need to do is go back to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut off the front and then we're gonna cut off the back. Cut off the front, cut off the back and so on. And then we can take that middle piece and scoop that out. I'm going a little bit thicker on the front. Actually, I might have to go a lot thicker, huh? Yeah, I want to go 
way back here. All right, so ignore that line. Again, this is dangerous because it's going to want to grab. So just get a really firm grip at first, and then you can you can loosen up once the blade has entered, penetrated. So we've got our three pieces and so I'm going to set the back and the front aside for a second and this middle piece is going to slide into here and since this is going to stick out over here on the edge I want the inside of the box to start somewhere inside here I don't want to start out here because then there's going to be a little a little hole so let's say I'm going to go here and then here. So then I can take those two marks and then I can, once again, I'm just going to use my, my fingers to draw what we, the waste that we want to remove. I didn't hit my line, but I don't really care. Let's see. This is part C. There's my C pieces. So this will be So that'll be my drawer. So I'll cut out the other two and then we'll glue them all back together and then we can sand down to that line. So now we're just gluing everything back up just like the box. I'm not sanding the inside here because I'm going to flock that later. It's all going to get covered. I went ahead and did a round over on the outside and then an even smaller round over on the inside. And then these guys, we sanded down to the line and they go in like so. So I'm happy with the way this looks on the outside. I love the, the texture. What I'm not digging is how the plywoods don't line up. I like how this sticks out, but on the sides, I don't know if we can see that. If I, if I just remove a little bit of material on the back there, then these will line up a little bit better. So I'm gonna sand the backs of the drawers down. I can remove that paper. And then also put a little round over here on the front to help with the transition. But I love, I love that texture. That's coming out really good. That's much better. We're just going to put some finish on these guys. I'm going to flock the inside of the boxes. It covers up all those bandsaw marks and these are nice velvety finish on the inside. Try not to get finish on the inside of your boxes because that might affect the way it sticks. I think I'll be okay. But rule four is definitely in effect today. The drawers are flocked. Sometimes I flock before adding finish, sometimes I flock after adding finish, but basically it's just this fibrous, this colored fibrous stuff with a colored glue that matches and then that lines the inside of that. I, I have a whole book on bandsaw boxes. This is the first book I've written. This particular box is not in this book, but I will have a link to signed copies of this book. I also have two more books. I've got the Make Your Own Cutting Board book, and then 
hot off the presses is the Make Your Own Kitchen Tools book. They are back in stock, so check out my website, makesomething.com for that. This little bandsaw has been fantastic. This is the Rikon 10 305. I know that some people have bought, it's either the 305 or 306, I'm not sure the difference, and have had trouble getting the blade to track on the wheel correctly. I have not, so I don't know if there was a flaw in some of the Rikons. I know that I've had good success, but I've heard other people have not. So yes, I recommend this, but keep in mind, um, and uh, somebody may have told me, I have a terrible memory. Somebody may have told me that they now have corrected that issue. I, I, can't, I can't really re remember. Anyways, I've not had any trouble tracking the blade on mine. Uh, again, that is a 4 TPI 316 skip tooth blade. There's a link to that down below in the description. It's the blade I, it's the blade I use 98% of the time. So um, I thought about adding a little base to it and then decided against it. I think it's fine on its own. Um, the reason I was thinking about adding a base is just to give it a little bit more weight on the bottom. Hold up, I changed my mind. I did make this base to give it a little bit of visual weight along the bottom. It doesn't need it for any kind of structure. I just thought it would even out the design a little bit if it had something to sit on. So I made this little platform. This is just out of a solid piece of walnut with a chamfered edge and that texture on the front. Whoever buys this gets to choose which side they want the front because there is this knot here, which could add a little design element or they could hide that knot and keep it in the back. So they, whoever buys this gets to choose how this wants to sit on there. I do have a book on bandsaw boxes. This box is not in there and this template is not going to be available because I am considering this a one-off piece of art. Now, if you wanna make this, you can draw it up, but I am not going to provide you that template. I don't care if you go ahead and try to make this, that's totally cool. I'm just not gonna provide that template. The base is not attached. It's just going to sit on there. I make the rules around here. It's just a platform. It's just a, it's a stand. It's a, it's a way to raise it up a little bit. So yeah, I feel much better about this since adding the base. It really evens things out visually. All of this wood, including the plywood, walnut, and zebra wood came from my friends at KenCraft and they do sell online. So check them out at KenCraftCompany.com. Of course, this isn't a practical box. Uh, it doesn't have drawer pulls, so you got to fight to open it. You don't really, but some people are going to complain like, how do you open the drawer? And like, the they don't hold a lot of things. That's not the point. The point is to make something. This is more of a piece of art. This is a something you would have on an end table or on a shelf or in a dining room. This is not something you use every day. So not everything we make has to have great importance. Some things can just be about the pleasure of making stuff and then having it as a showpiece, an art piece. So I consider this art. That is gonna wrap it up. Um, you may have seen weird things going on in the shop. We talked about that over on Patreon. So if you are a Patreon member, you already know what's going on. You've already, you know, Patreon people are in the know. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.